Hello. Welcome back to Bible Reading with Study Guide. We're reading about the kingdom there. After David and after Solomon. Rehoboam and Jeroboam. It's split. Oh, sad. So today we're going to start back in 1 Kings. Remember we're combining Kings and Chronicles. Because they overlap. Try to keep the story somewhat chronological. Alright. So we're starting today. 1 Kings chapter 20. Or 1 Kings 16 through 20. So 1 Kings 16. Then the word of the Lord came to Jehu, the son of Hananiah, against Bashir, saying, Inasmuch as I lifted you out of the dust and made you ruler over my people Israel, and you have walked in the way of Jeroboam, and have made my people Israel sin, to provoke me to anger with their sins. Surely I will take away the posterity of Basha and the posterity of his house, and I will make your house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. The dog shall eat whoever belongs to Basha and dies in the city, and the birds of the air shall eat whoever dies in the fields. Whoa. Now the rest of the acts of Basha, what he did and his might, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel? So Basha rested with his fathers and was buried in Terza. Then Elah, his son, reigned in his place. And also the word of the Lord came by the prophet Jehu, the son of Hananiah, against Basha and his house because of all the evil he did in the sight of the Lord and provoking him to anger with the work of his hands and being like the house of Jeroboam. And because he killed them. On the 26th year of Asa, king of Judah, the other part of the country, Elah, the son of Basha, became king over Israel and reigned two years in Terza. Now his servant, Zimri, commander of half his chariots, conspired against him, as he was in Terza, drinking himself drunk in the house of Arza, steward of his house in Terza. And Zimri went in and struck him and killed him in the 27th year of Asa, king of Judah, and reigned in his place. And it came to pass, when he began to reign, as soon as he was seated on his throne, that he killed all the household of Basha. He did not leave him one male, neither of his relatives nor of his friends. Thus Zimri destroyed all the household of Basha according to the word of the Lord which he spoke against Basha by Jehu the prophet, for all the sins of Basha and the sins of Eli his son, by which they had sinned, and by which they had made Israel sin, and provoking the Lord God of Israel to anger with their idols. Now the rest of the acts of Elah and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel? So that was a quick change. It went from Basha to Elah. And then Zimri. In the 27th year of Asa, king of Judah, Zimri had reigned in Terza seven days. And the people were encamped against Gibbethon, which belonged to the Philistines. Now the people who were encamped heard it said, Zimri has conspired and also has killed the king. So all Israel made Omri, the commander of the army, king over Israel that day in the camp. Then Omri and all of Israel with him went up from Gibbethon, and they besieged Terza. And it happened when Zimri saw that the city was taken, that he went into the citadel of the king's house, and burned the king's house down upon himself with fire, and died, because of the sins which he had committed in doing evil in the sight of the Lord, in walking in the ways of Jeroboam, and in his sin which he, made, which he had committed to make Israel sin. Now the rest of the acts of Zimri and the treason he committed are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel? I think that's about the shortest reign I've ever heard of. Seven days? Wow. Then the people of Israel were divided into two parts. Even Israel was split. Half of the people followed Tibni, the son of Genath, to make him king, and half followed Omri. But the people who followed Omri prevailed over the people who followed Tibni, the son of Ginnath. So Tibni died and Omri reigned. 
In the 31st year of Asa, king of Judah, Omri became king over Israel and reigned 12 years. Six years he reigned in Terzah, and he bought the hill of Samaria from Shemer for two talents of silver. Then he built on the hill and called the name of the city which he built Samaria, after the name of Shemer, owner of the hill. Omri did evil in the sight eyes of the Lord and did worse than all those who were before him. For he walked in all the ways of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and in his sin by which he made Israel sin, provoking the Lord God of Israel to anger with their idols. Now the rest of the acts of Omri which he did, and the might that he showed, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? So Omri rested with his fathers and was buried in Samaria. Then Ahab, his son, reigned in his place. So the book of the kings of the, the chronicles of the kings, that's what we keep going back to. First Kings, Second Kings, and then First Chronicles, Second Chronicles, they're both various viewpoints of this history. So let's continue. In the thirty eighth year of Asa, king of Judah, Ahab, the son of Omri, became king over Israel. And Ahab the son of Omri reigned over Israel and Samaria 22 years. Now Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of the Lord more than all who were before him. And it came to pass, as though it had been a trivial thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that he took as wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbaal, king of the Sidonians, and he went and served Baal and worshipped him. Then he set up an altar for Baal in the temple of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. And Ahab made a wooden image. Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel who were before him. In his days, Hiel of Bethel built Jericho. Remember that? It wasn't going to be a good thing for the builder of Jericho. He laid its foundations with Abiram, his firstborn. And with his youngest son, Segub, he set up the gates according to the word of the Lord, which is spoken through Joshua, the son of Nun. Okay, I don't think there's a question until 18. No. Okay. Excuse me. Must be something in the air today. 1 Kings chapter 17. And Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. That's power. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Get away from here and turn eastward, and hide by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. And it will be that you shall drink from the brook and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. For he went and stayed by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening. And he drank from the brook. And it happened after a while that the brook dried up, because there had been no rain in the land. That'd be interesting, having crows feed you, bring fat food to you. <laughs> then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, indeed, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Please bring me a little cup a little water in a cup, that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, Please, bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So she said, As the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I might go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear Go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake 
from it first and bring it to me. And afterwards, and afterward make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. And she and her household ate for many days. The bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. Now it happened after these things that the son of the woman who owned the house became sick. And his sickness was so serious that there was no breath left in him. So she said to Elijah, What have I to do with you, O man of God? Have you come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to kill my son? And he said to her, Give me your son. So he took him out of her arms and carried him to the upper room where he was staying and laid him on his own bed. Then he cried out to the Lord and said, O Lord my God, have you also brought tragedy on the widow with whom I lodge by killing her son? And he stretched himself out on the child three times and cried out to the Lord and said, O Lord my God, I pray, let this child's soul come back into him. And he revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down from the upper room into the house and gave him to his mother. And Elijah said, See, your son lives. And then the woman said to Elijah, now by this I know that you are a man of God, and that the truth of the Lord in your mouth is the truth. So this was a famine and a drought, severe drought, going on in the land. No rain for years. All right, First Kings 18. And it came to pass after many days, that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go, present yourself to Ahab, and I will send rain on the earth. So Elijah went to present himself to Ahab. And there was a severe famine in Samaria. And Ahab had called Obadiah, who was in charge of his house. Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly. For so it was, while Jezebel massacred the prophets of the Lord, that Obadiah had taken 100 prophets and hidden them 50 to a cave and had fed them with bread and water. And Ahab said to Obadiah, Go into the land, to all the springs of water, to all the brooks. Perhaps we may find grass to keep the horses and mules alive, so that we will not have to kill any livestock. So they divided the land between them and ex to explore it. Ahab went one way by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. Now as Obadiah was on his way, suddenly Elijah met him, and he recognized him, and fell on his face, and said, Is that you, my lord Elijah? And he answered him, It is I. Go tell your master, Elijah is here. And he answered him, It is I. Oh, go tell your master, Elijah is here. So he said, How have I sinned that you are delivering your servant into the hand of Ahab to kill me? As the Lord your God lives, there is no nation or kingdom where my master has not sent someone to hunt for you. And when they said he is not here, he took an oath from the kingdom or nation that they could not find you. And now you say, go tell your master Elijah is here. And it came to pass, as soon as I am gone from you, that the Spirit of the Lord will carry you to a place I do not know. So when I go and tell Ahab, and he cannot find you, he will kill me. But I, your servant, have feared the Lord from my youth. Was it not reported to my Lord what I did when Jezebel killed the prophets of the Lord? How I hid one hundred men of the Lord's prophets, fifty to a cave, and fed them with bread and water? And now you say, go tell your master Elijah is here. He will kill me. Then Elijah said, as the Lord of hosts lives before whom I stand, I will surely present myself to him today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. Then it happened when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said to him, Is that you, O troubler of Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but you and your father's house have, and that you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, 
and have followed the Baals. Now therefore, send and gather all Israel to me on Mount Carmel, the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Ashereth, Asherah, who eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent for the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together on Mount Carmel. And Elijah came to all the people and said, How long will you falter between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, but if Baal follow him. But the people answered him not a word. Then Elijah said to the people, I alone am left a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Therefore, let them give us two bowls, and let them choose one bowl for themselves, cut it in pieces, and lay it on the wood, but put no fire under it. And I will prepare the other bowl, and lay it on the wood, but put no fire under it. Then you call on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God who answers by fire, he is God. So all the people answered and said, It is well spoken. Now Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, Choose one bowl for yourselves and prepare it. For you are many, and call on the name of your God, but put no fire under it. So they took the bowl which was given them, and they prepared it, and called on the name of Baal from morning until noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, and no one answered. Then they leaped about at the altar which they had made. And so it was at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a god. Either he is meditating, or he is busy, or he is on a journey, or perhaps he is sleeping and must be awakened. So they cried aloud and cut themselves, as was their custom with knives and lances, until the blood gushed out of them. And when midday was passed, they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. But there was no voice. No one answered. No one paid attention. Then Elijah said to all the people, Come near to me. So all the people came near to him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took twelve stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, Israel shall be your name. Then with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench around the altar, large enough to hold two seas of seed. And he put the wood in order, cut the bowl in pieces, laid it on the wood, and said, Fill four water pots with water, pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. Then he said, Do it a second time. And they did it a second time. And he said, Do it a third time. And they did it a third time. So the water ran all around the altar. And he also filled the trench with water. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. Then Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, and I am your servant, that I have done all these things at your word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that you are the Lord God, and that you have turned their backs, their hearts back to you again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. Now when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. And Elijah said to them, Seize the prophets of Baal. Do not let one of them escape. So they seized him and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and executed them there. Then Elijah said to Ahab, Go up. Eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, or Carmel. Then he bowed down to the ground, put his face between his knees, and said to this, his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. So he went and looked and said, There is nothing. And seven times he said, Go again. So it came to pass the seventh time that he said, there was a cloud as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea. So he said, Go up and say to Ahab, Prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Now it happened in the meantime that the sky became black with clouds and wind and there was heavy rain. 
So Ahab rode away and went to Jezreel. Then the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran ahead of Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Wow, what a miraculous show of who is God, right? All right, a couple questions. How did Elijah prove who was the real God? Okay, we just read that, didn't we? That whole sacrifice thing. How many times did Elijah's servant look for rain before he saw a small cloud? The seventh time he saw the small cloud, didn't he? So he went up six times and there was nothing, but the seventh time, it's just a little bit of cloud over there. For long, it was a golly washer. <laughs> rained and rained and rained. First Kings 19. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. Also how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, So let the gods do to me and more also if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life and went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he prayed that he might die and said, It is enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. Then as he lay and slept under the broom, a broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him. And said to him, Arise and eat. Then he looked, and there by his head was a cake of bread on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came back the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for you. So he rose and ate and drank, and he went in the strength of that food, forty days and forty nights, as far as Horeb, the mountain of God. Forty days on that, those two me meals. I wonder what kind of food that was. And there he went into a cave and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? So he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone, alone am left, and they seek to take my life. Then he said to him, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the earth and after the fire, a still small voice. So it was when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went and stood in the entrance of the cave. Suddenly a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I've been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant torn down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when you arrive, anoint Hazael as king over Syria. Also you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, as king over Israel, and Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abram, Mehola, you shall anoint as prophet in your place. It should be that whoever escapes the sword of Hazael, Jehu will kill, and whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. Yet I have reserved seven thousand in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. That's kind of encouraging. So he departed from there. 
and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him. And he was with the twelfth. Then Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on him. And he left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, Please let me kiss my father and my mother, then I will follow you. And he said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? So Elijah, Elisha turned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slaughtered them and boiled their flesh using the oxen's equipment and gave it to the people and they ate. Then he arose and followed Elijah and became his servant. Did God reveal himself in the wind, the fire, or the earthquake? How did God show himself to Elijah? A still, small voice, right? Not lots of clamor and power, but a still, small voice. First Kings 20. Now Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, gathered all his forces together. Thirty-two kings were with him, with horses and chariots. And he went up and besieged Samaria and made war against it. Then he sent messengers into the city to Ahab, king of Israel, and said to him, Thus says Ben-Hadad, Your silver and your gold are mine. Your loveliest wives and children are mine. And the king of Israel answered and said, My lord, O king, just as you say, I and all, that I have are yours. Then the messengers came back and said, Thus speaks Ben-Hadad, saying, Indeed, I have sent to you, saying, You shall deliver to me your silver and your gold, your wives and your children, but I will send my servants to you tomorrow about this time. And they shall search your house and the houses of your servants. And it shall be that whatever is pleasant in your eyes, they will put in their hands and take it. So the king of Israel called all the elders of the land and said, Notice, please, see how this man seeks trouble, for he sent to me for my wives, my children, my silver, my gold, and I did not deny him. And all the elders and all the people said to him, Do not listen or consent. Therefore he said to the messengers of ben -Hadad, Tell my lord the king all that you sent for to your servant the first time I will do, but this thing I cannot do. ben -Hadad. Seemed like we read about him in First Chronicles, right? Yesterday. First Second Chronicles, sorry. Second Chronicles. Asa had made a, a treaty with Ben-Hadad to come against Ahab and Israel. He was trusting in him rather than in God, right? Okay, so this is the same Ben-Hadad. And the messengers departed and brought back word to him. Then Ben-Hadad sent to him and said, The gods do so to me and more also, if any, enough dust is left of Samaria a handful for each of the people who follow me. So the king of Israel answered and said, Tell them, let not the one who puts on his armor boast like the one who takes it off. And it happened when Ben-Hadad heard this message, as he and the kings were drinking at the command post, that he said to his servants, Get ready. And they got ready to attack the city. Suddenly a prophet approached Ahab, king of Israel, saying, Thus says the Lord, have you seen all this great multitude? Behold, I will deliver it into your hand today, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So Ahab said, By whom? And he said, Thus says the Lord, By the young leaders of the provinces. Then he said, Who will settle the battle in order? Who will set the battle in order? And he answered, You. Then he mustered the young leaders of the provinces, and there were two hundred and thirty-two and after them he mustered all the people, all the children of Israel, 7,000. So he went out at noon. Meanwhile, Ben-Hadad and the 32 kings helping him were getting drunk 
at the command post. The young leaders of the province went out, and Benadad sent out a patrol, and they told him, saying, Men are coming out of Samaria. So he said, If they have come out for peace, take them alive. And if they have come out for war, take them alive. Then these young leaders of the provinces went out of the city with the army which followed them, and each one killed his man. So the Syrians fled, and Israel pursued them. And Benadad the king of Syria escaped on a horse with the cavalry. Then the king of Israel went out and attacked the horses and chariots and killed the Syrians with a great slaughter. And the prophet came to the king of Israel and said to him, Go strengthen yourselves, yourself. Take note and see what you should do, for in the spring of the year the king of Syria will come up against you. Then the servants of the king of Syria said to him, Their gods are gods of the hills, therefore they were stronger than we. But if we fight against them in the plain, surely we will be stronger than they. So do this thing. Dismiss the kings each from his position and put captains in their places. And you shall muster an army like the army that you have lost, horse for horse, chariot for chariot. Then we will fight against them in the plain. Surely we will be stronger than they. So it was in the spring of the year that Benadad mustered the Syrians and went up to Aphek to fight against Israel. And the children of Israel were mustered and given provisions, and they went against them. Now the children of Israel encamped before them, like two little flocks of goats, while the Syrians filled the countryside. Then a man of God came and spoke to the king of Israel and said, Thus says the Lord, because the Syrians have said, The Lord God is of the hills, and he is not God of the valleys. Therefore I will deliver this great multitude in your hand, and you shall know that I am the Lord. And they camped opposite each other for seven days. So it was that on the seventh day the battle was joined, and the children of Israel killed 100,000 foot soldiers of the Syrians in one day. But the rest fled to Aphek into the city. Then a wall fell on 27,000 of the men who were left. And Benadad fled and went into the city into an inner chamber. Then the servant said to him, Look now, we have heard that the kings of the house of Israel are merciful kings. Please let us put sackcloth around our waist and ropes around our heads and go out to the king of Israel. Perhaps he will spare your life. So they wore sackcloth around their waists and put robes around their, ropes around their heads and came to the king of Israel and said, Please, Your servant Benadad says, Please let me live. And he said, Is he still alive? He is my brother. Now the men were watching closely to see whether any sign of mercy would come from him. And they quickly grasped at his word and said, Your brother Benadad. So he said, Go bring him. Then Benadad came out to him, and he had come up into the chariot. So Benadad said to him, The cities which my father took from your father I will restore, and you may set up marketplaces for yourself in Damascus, as my father did in Samaria. Then Ahab said, I will send you away with this treaty. So he made a treaty with them and sent him away. Now a certain man of the sons of the prophets said to the neighbor, By the word of the Lord, strike me, please. And the man refused to strike him. Then he said to him, Because you have not obeyed the voice of the Lord, surely as soon as you depart from me, a lion shall kill you. And as soon as he left, the lion found him and killed him. And he found another man and said, Strike me, please. So the man struck him, inflicting a wound. Then the prophet departed and waited for the king by the road and disguised himself with a bandage over his eyes. Now as the king passed by, he cried out to the king and said, Your servant went out into the midst of the battle. And there a man came over and brought a man to me and said, Guard this man. If by any means he is missing, your life shall be for his life or else you shall pay a talent of silver. While your servant was busy there, here and there, he was gone. Then the king of Israel said to him, So shall your judgment be. You yourself have decided it. And he hastened to take the bandage away from his eyes, and the king of Israel recognized him as one of the prophets. Then he said to him, Thus says the Lord, 
because you have let slip out of your hand a man whom I anointed to utter destruction. Therefore your life shall go for his life, and your people for his people. So the king of Israel went to his house, sullen and displeased, and came to Samaria. Ahab, what an ungodly king. Do not listen to the prophets. Because that's all for today. No more questions. Maybe we'll find out how it ends with Ahab tomorrow.